Hey there everyone, this is Joe in general, your resident reason and evidence enthusiast. It is Wednesday the 10th of January 2018 and I'm continuing my mega mini analysis where I take a look at a whole bunch of different cryptos. I've promised to do uh, a few videos in quick succession looking at a whole bunch of cryptos, maybe four in each video uh, because we're at the start of the new year and uh, this is my first bunch of videos back. Uh, for the year and we've seen a lot of action in the cryptocurrencies since the start of the year. So two days ago I did uh, the big three plus one. I did Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum and EOS. Check that one out right there. I was going to do a video yesterday but then my internet was down so it's, it's back up today. This is my first chance to do another one. So you get another one today probably uh, video number two of at least uh, three I would suggest. So probably another video coming after this one in the next maybe 24-48 hours. But uh, today's uh, cryptos I happen to be looking at are Bitcoin, Burstcoin, Redcoin, and finally Seacoin. Now, if, if at any time you do want to skip ahead to your favorite coin, I will put a link to the time codes in the info section of the YouTube page and as part of the pinned comment. Of course, my new subscribers, welcome uh, to my newbies. Total now of 7,885. Hit the big red subscribe button right there. Okay, so quickly before I move on to the analyses, I want to talk about the three reasons why I'm talking about these four coins. Three reasons why I'm talking about the four coins. So reason number one, one is I've talked about all four of these coins before. Now in, in crypto land, these coins would be considered, I guess, maybe middle-aged, um, maybe baby boomer generation because they've been around for quite a while now, at least in crypto land, that is. Um, it's kind of like dog years. Uh, so uh, I've talked about Sia coin like eight months ago right here. Talked about Bitcoin right here seven months ago. Bitcoin and Sia coin. Uh, I've talked about Burst Coin, uh, where is that? Right here, that was seven months ago. Uh, and uh, what else? Sea Coin, as I mentioned. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've talked about all these coins before. So uh, they uh, are having a repeat uh, analysis again, uh, you know, a number of months down the track. And that's not the main reason. Here's uh, the other two reasons, and these happen to be the main reasons. Do you notice anything uh, in common? with these four particular charts. Do you notice anything in common with these four particular charts? Now, some astute uh, of my astute people uh, watching this video right here, my subscribers and people watching my video for the first time, you may notice two specific things. So let's talk about the first thing. Right here, uh, each of these coins have finished a full market cycle. What the hell am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this market cycle right here. If you go to Google and um, Google Images, type in Wall Street Cheat Sheet. I'm sure this will come up. And this is the Wall Street Cheat Sheet Psychology of a Market Cycle. So notice something there. What we come through here, we go through this optimism phase right here, the belief the thrill, and finally the euphoria right up here. And if you can read that right here, this euphoria says, I'm a genius, we're all going to be rich. And then generally what happens from there is a pretty sharp sell-off. Then we do see a bit of a rise and we think, oh, 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 no, it's coming back, it's coming back. Uh, no, it's not. And then we go through this uh, market cycle of human emotion where we go through uh, anxiety, denial, panic, anger and finally this sort of depression range right here where the price just bottoms out and doesn't look like it's ever coming back ever again. And so that's a full market cycle. So we've done it here in uh, Bitcoin. We did it here. Uh, we did kind of match this same high here, but we did it here in Burstcoin. You can see that consolidation through time at a very low level in price. This is in relation to Bitcoin, by the way. We did it in Redcoin. Here you go, right up here. Here's the euphoria, the sell-off, etc. And the, so that depression phase right there. And we did it in Sia Coin as well. So not exactly following the market cycle, but you can, you know, not uh, pip for pip. Uh, but you can see it's that general pattern. Okay, so that's uh, reason number two. But the main reason for doing uh, analyses of these four uh, coins again, it wouldn't make any sense for me to do analysis of them if they just finished their market cycle and they were staying down there. Well, what you might, not, might notice right here is, look at them, all four of them looks like to ha it looks like they have started a new 
market cycle. Here it is in Sia coin. You certainly can see it here in red coin. In fact, we've broken through the all time high from here and we've touched the all time high, new all time high twice. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Burst coin right here, we've broken out of its old market, market cycle, creating a new market cycle, what it looks like to be, and back again with Bytecoin. So those are the three reasons. I've talked about the coins before. They've all had a full market cycle completed and they're back, baby. It seems like they're back. Now, of course, this is not financial advice. Do your own research. Have a look into what these coins are, what they do, what their use case is, etc. Uh, but you may find... And I could be wrong here, but you may find that these coins may join uh, a lot of the other cryptocurrencies uh, as they all rise, almost all of them rise. There's going to be some scam coins, etc., but most of the coins are going to see a, a rise in their uh, prices um, in 2018 as more and more people, more and more of the percentage of the population get into the cryptocurrencies. It's only getting... Um, uh, more and more, uh, that was like, I should say, more and more people are getting involved in it and it's only getting um, higher. It's not tapering off. Uh, it's it's increasing, it seems to be exponentially. But it's only um, maybe at one and a half, two percent of the population at the moment. Wait until it's 3%, 4%, 7%, 13% and then higher from there. So as Cliff High says, if you guys are familiar with, with Cliff High, uh, rising tides raise all ships. So you may see as, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and the big boys um, and Litecoin, etc. have their big rises. You may find that the littler guys like Bytecoin and Burstcoin, Redcoin and Searcoin may join with them. And in fact, I do think some of these coins have really good use cases, uh, but we'll talk about those in a second. So, so those are the three reasons, but let's get, let's get straight on to the analysis. So let's take a look at Bytecoin. Now, Bytecoin is the first private untraceable cryptocurrency. So go to bytecoin.org and do your research. Of course, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time talking about what it is, what it does. You've got the internet. You can look it up yourself. But let's talk about the price. So as you can see here, that full market cycle has completed and it is most definitely, to me, look like it started a new market cycle. Now, does it mean that it's going to go straight up from here? No, of course not. We may see it come up and then come back down for a little bit, but I think over 2018, I think in all four of these coins is going to be the same case, again, my opinion only, I think they're all going to break their previous all-time highs and make new highs before completing another full market cycle, if that makes sense. Again, download the Wall Street cheat sheet if you can find it. So we came off a top here, and again, this is priced in Bitcoin. This is the Poloniex uh, website price, exchange price. We came up to a top of 280 Satoshi, and uh, that's coming off where I'm down here at five. I bought originally bought some Bitcoin back here when I was talking about Bitcoin all the way back here. I got in at about five, right down there. And then I was doing some buying and some selling, etc. And uh, I did miss the top though. So this is actually one of the coins where I do still have some from down here when I bought at five. I didn't sell out when it hit the top because I thought it yeah, might have gone higher. Uh, but so I learned my lesson there and I actually bought a bunch at around about 140 thinking uh, that it you know, might possibly go even higher. And I knew less about the market cycle back then than I do now. So, you know, we... We're constantly learning. I know more about trading uh, now than I did do, you know, than I did seven to eight months ago. Uh, but uh, I actually have some that I still have. And I, I rode that wave all the way down through the depression phase. And I thought, oh, no, oh, no, I've lost it all. It's all gone, all that jazz. And it's like, ah, I'll just put a sell order here around about 140. And maybe one day it'll hit there and I'll just recoup my cost, right? Um, get my, you know, break even. Uh, but I've since removed that sell order from Poloniex. It's uh, not there anymore. It's not in this order book because 
Knowing what I know now, or I'm a little bit better a trader than I was eight months ago. Uh, I do think, as I said just before, we're going to break all-time highs and make new highs. So I've gotten rid of that sell order, but I've yet to break even with uh, my buy-in around about 140, but I do have still have some back here from five, etc., and kind of around this area here. Anyway, I digress. High of 280, low of 14. Uh, and I did happen to notice the breakout here. The volume was spiking and we did break above. We got to about 30 31 and I ended up buying some more here at 31 so I'm back in the game I added to my position of Bitcoin even though I have some up here at 140 I could I really really have a good feeling it's going to hit 140 and further up uh, definitely in 2018 my opinion of course not financial advice uh, more here at 31 we came up to a high of uh, 66 back down to this very key support level right here. You can see that it was a level of resistance, then a key level of support. Uh, another leg higher up to the 38.2 uh, Fibonacci uh, line, the Fibonacci point, which again is calculated from the, the very uh, all time high here of 280, the low of 14, came up to close to that Fibonacci mark of 38.2 and back down to this kind of area, the 23.6. And we're hovering now around about 79. Maybe a good opportunity. And of course, uh, um, this is not financial advice, but I do have a feeling we may be making uh, new all-time highs coming in 2018. And we're having seen a retracement right now. Might be an opportunity to maybe diversify your portfolio and maybe get in around about now. Of course, that is up to you. I am not telling you what to do. Uh, so moving up from here, the next levels of resistance, where would they be? Where could you potentially see another, you know, burst up and then a retracement down? Uh, well, you'd be wanting to look at the Fibonacci lines. That's the kind of the, the major levels you'd want to be looking at. Uh, the next level here is the 50% at around about 150. So you could see it come back there and then come back down to the 38.2 level at about 115 roughly. Um, I have a feeling, I, I don't know why I have this feeling, but I, and I could be completely wrong, of course, but I think the next major level uh, is right here at the 61.8 at hovering around about 180. Technically it's 178, but you'd probably see, I reckon, some sell orders or some massive sell orders at around about your 180 mark. So let's just go into the Poloniex website, see what kind of uh, cell walls we have. Uh, at 180, you've got 42. Actually, 175 right there, that's where your big sell order is at uh, 97 Bitcoin worth at 175. So you, you'd consider putting a sell order in at before 175, so kind of 173, 172, something like that, if you think that is going to be the next area uh, before we see a retracement. So for whatever reason, I don't think we're gonna, I think we may, sorry, possibly not sail through, but sort of push through 150 and come up to this uh, 180 level here, as you can see back here. It's where we had that uh, dead cat bounce, that and the fake out. And that's where we faked out right about there. So I think that's a key level of resistance. I think that's the next level. And moving higher from there, of course, you got the 78.6 level here at about 223. Uh, and of course, the all time high at 280. Uh, moving up from here, where could we go to? I mean, the sky's the limit, it seems to be for two, uh, 2018, but Let's look at some key Fibonacci levels again, based on the old high right here, the previous all-time high, well, the all-time high and the low here of 14. We've got the 1.618 at 444. You could call that 450 comfortably. The 2.72 at 618 and the 2.618 at uh, 710. You could, I guess, call that 700 as a psychological value. And moving up from here, you've got the 4.236 level at 1141. Let me get rid of that. I think the psychological barrier of 1000 would get in the way there. So potentially what you may see, and again, this I may be possibly lowballing this, you never know, but you know, let's just spitball it for now. The next market cycle may not finish. It may not hit the euphoria phase until possibly I think around about that thousand mark. Now, of course, we may come up and have uh, you know some retracements, etc. But the big blow-off top 
may happen at around about that thousand mark. That's not a, I'm not giving you a, uh, a huge guarantee of that, could go way higher, could be lower, but um, just uh, basing it on, uh, you know, percentage gains, it looks like, you know, coming up to here before we have a giant uh, market cycle completion where it comes all the way back down, that doesn't seem logical to me. I think we would need to be in this kind of general area right here uh, for it to warrant it being, um, you know, majorly, majorly oversold before, before we then come back and do like we do here, where we uh, have a complete market cycle. So that's my opinion on Bitcoin. Um, I will leave you to do your own research. Head over to bitcoin.org. All right, moving on to Burstcoin. Talked about Burstcoin uh, previously, about seven months ago, roughly. Uh, this one right here, Burstcoin doing the same thing, uh, had a high of 978 Satoshi. Again, this is on the Poloniex website. Uh, completed its market cycle and came all the way back down to around about 60 Satoshi, roughly. And since we've seen a new market cycle occurring, so we've that was a really uh, a really big burst. It it burst had a big burst from its low here at about eighty six, and we sailed all the way through the twenty three point six, uh, the thirty eight point two, and the fifty percent, and came closer to the sixty one point eight percent. But we had a top out at right here. We topped out at about 594 roughly uh, since then about a 50 percent retracement roughly so far and then a higher high at about 725 and then we've retraced down uh, to this downtrend line what you'll notice right here so this downtrend line is going through the all-time high right here and that high it made just there so you just draw in a trend line right there and lo and behold uh, after we broke up through that trend line, we've since come back down to visit that trend line. That's that's a bit of a pattern that occurs. And if we look at, this is interesting, if we look at the, maybe the two hour, uh, looks like, yeah, right there, you can see it bounce right off it right there. Interesting. Okay, so uh, moving higher from here, where could we go? Let's go back down to the one day time frame. Let's talk about moving lower. We should talk about moving lower in case it does, of course. Uh, well, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you've got these Fibonacci levels, maybe around about 400 it could come, come down to, or of course it could come back down to the uh, 23.6 here at 277. You, I guess you could comfortably call that the 300 level, so it's matching this low right here. But I think the bias is to the upside, particularly for the whole of 2018. So moving higher, we would need to obviously break through, and I think the next level would be breaking the all-time high here of 978. I don't think this level right here, the 78.6 at 781 Satoshi. It's only a tiny little bit above this previous high. So I think we would sail through this Fibonacci mark right here and we would come to knocking on the door of the previous all-time high at 978 roughly. And moving higher from here, uh, where can we go to? We've got the 1.618 uh, Fibonacci level right there. Let me do that. So this one's a little bit funny. There we go. 1.618 at 1,544 Satoshi right there on that blue line. Moving higher from here, we've got the 2.72 at 2,144 Satoshi and a quite a, usually quite a key uh, Fibonacci level extension point that is of the 2.618 and that is at 2,462. Uh, and moving higher from here, you've got the 4.236 at 3,946. 3, you could call that 3,950 to 4,000 maybe. And maybe even anywhere between 3,900 to 4,000 Satoshi. And again, I think it would need to get to that kind of area before uh, we see uh, you know, a completion, you know, a euphoria uh, point within a the new market cycle before we see a massive drop off. So I think this kind of general area. Now what you might notice is this trend line right here. So could that even be the point? You never know. Uh, through these two 
uh, highs right here, this high and this high. I just drew that in, so it could potentially uh, come up to here before finishing a mark, before uh, the euphoria uh, phase hits, and then we have a full market cycle from there. Now, you never know though. This could, I could be, as I said before, with the Bitcoin analysis. Um, I could be really lowballing it. We could, in through the whole of 2018, this could be just an absolute drop in the bucket, and we could see much, much, much higher prices. You can't even see them there. So just bear that in mind, okay? Just bear that in mind that usually uh, we tend to underestimate uh, tops. They tend to go a lot higher than where we think they are going to go. So do not take uh, what I'm saying as your financial advice. Of course, um, but uh, I think you know when we get to this kind of area, it'll start looking to be a bit oversold. That's my opinion, of course, but that doesn't mean it's going to be the complete market cycle top. So that is uh, Burst Coin, and you should also head over to burst-coin.org. Check out what the coin is, uh, what it does. It's an interesting one in the way that it is mined. Uh, I think you guys might actually find this really interesting. Uh, it's mined via your hard drive space. Uh, it's got nothing to do with solving, you know, um, a particular algorithm or, or anything like that. Uh, it's all to do with uh, hard drive space. So the more hard drive space that you have, the more Bitcoin, you, uh, the more burst coin that you can earn. So here's someone's uh, burst coin mining rig, and it's just basically a whole bunch of... Um, uh, hard drives here all connected together so that's the way you um, mine uh, burst coin so check that one out uh, and check out their their deal with proof of capacity uh, so that is by uh, burst coin that is and let's move straight on to red coin my old friend red coin I've spoken about red coin a few times I uh, regaled all of you with a massive uh, excellent story in one of these ones, I don't remember which one it was, uh, about uh, the fact that uh, I found Redcoin uh, like I found uh, 100 bucks in an old pair of jeans. I'd forgotten I'd had Redcoin. Um, and actually, no, what? No, sorry, that's not, no, this is what happened. I'd lost, uh, no, this is what happened. I lost uh, a whole bunch of um, crypto on a uh, now defunct exchange called Cryptsy. And for some reason, I don't know why, I didn't realize this at the time, but I transferred my red coin over to another exchange. And I thought, you know, ah, oh, Cripsy, all my stuff's gone. But then I logged into uh, this exchange, which I thought I'd never logged into before. I thought I was signing up for a new account. Lo and behold, I already had an account and I found red coin in this account. Uh, and then uh, it had a massive rise in the price. Uh, this is this price here, and then I kind of sold out around about here, uh, and I made a good little profit. Uh, but then, uh, I then started buying back in, and then I again, like these two here, I rode the wave down uh, recently. Uh, but uh, we have seen a massive rise in the price, definitely new market cycle in Redcoin. Uh, so I am currently up on my position where I, you know, got back in kind of around about here thinking it might go back up, but then no, it, the market cycle had not completed. And I wasn't, again, I wasn't um, fully, fully aware of the market cycle back, you know, seven, eight months ago, but I know much more about uh, this now than I did back then. So I rode that wave down, but now I'm certainly riding, riding that wave back up, seen some great gains in Redcoin. Uh, topping out now, at uh, 197, huge retracement back down and all the way back up again. Don't know if that's a double top situation, we shall, we shall see. Hopefully it's not a double top and we come all the way back down again. But um, as I said before, rising tides raise all ships. So I think Redcoin has got um, you know a long way to go higher in 2018, my opinion. Head over to redcoin.com, check out what it is. It's actually a payment system for uh, social media, uh, the sort of social websites. Redcoin achieves this by integrating a digital currency platform seamlessly with all major social networks to make the process of sending and receiving money fun and rewarding for everyone. So that's their, I guess, their mission statement. That's what they do. Um, and they've got a pretty uh, solid, loyal following. 
Um, so uh, let me go back here to uh, Redcoin. Um, so let's check out some Fibonacci. Let's do that based on, let's do it. I think now we might need to do it based on, I would do it on the, the old high and the old low just for now, since we'll, uh, we did that before. Let's check out to see whether that matches with anything. Let's see right here. Uh, as you can see here, when we broke up through the all time high, we pressed that new all time high and then we came back down to the 50% level roughly again from this old high and this old low. Uh, maybe this one isn't going to be the most beneficial. So we'll remove that and actually, no, my apologies. Uh, I'm doing this off the cuff here. So we'll, we'll put it back in because we'll look at the extension, Fibonacci extension points actually, because what you'll see is that we did come back and we're kind of hovering around the all time, the previous all time high right there. So we will use this uh, currently as our Fibonacci extension points. All right there. Sorry for all the ads gang. This is, uh, this is live baby. Uh, and I'm not going to record it again. I don't like to start and stop. I just like to kind of push through preferably. Uh, so here we go. We have uh, the 1.618 at 219. We have the 2.72 at 300, roughly 305 technically. The 2.618 extension at 351 and the 4.236 at 564. Also going to go a little bit higher with this one because I want you to look at this trend line right here, which is going through these previous old highs, this one and this one. Let's see where this heads up to. It's not this line right here. Actually, I'll get rid of that one right there. This line, follow that line right there all the way up. See where it gets up to. And we're heading up to right up there. And what is that at? That's around about your 900 mark. And let's do that right there. I think, in my opinion, for 2018, and it could go much higher than this. It could go much, much higher than this. But I think uh, we are at least going to see in red coin, again, my opinion, not financial advice, we're going to at least see it reach uh, this the this long-term trend line right here. And maybe see that, that level right there, that, that uh, point right there. We may hit this line at some point before we see a large retracement. So could we come up to a kind of round about your sort of thousand dollar again, like burst coin, your thousand thousand uh, dollar, your thousand Satoshi mark uh, before we see uh, the full market cycle complete. Uh, oh, I mean, start its down leg from the euphoria phase off there down to complacency, anxiety, all that stuff down there. Uh, I think that is quite a likelihood that we will at least see, in my opinion, for 2018 in red coin, a mark of about 1000 Satoshi. Again, please understand, I could be absolutely wrong. It may not do that at all, in, or it may in fact just blast straight through it at some point in 2018. But I think the minimum point is we are going to see this line be tested at some point this year. That's my uh, opinion with Redcoin. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that with uh, Redcoin. Um, I don't think there's much else to say about that one. So we're going to move straight on to my old friend again, another one, Sia Coin. I love my Sia Coin. Check out this one over here. This is a decentralized cloud network. Okay, so completely private SIA splits apart, encrypts and distributes your files across a decentralized network. Pardon me. Since you hold the keys, you own your own data. No outside company can access or control your files, unlike traditional cloud storage providers. I think they have a very good uh, use case. And it's been around for quite a while now. It comes in and out of fashion. As you can see, it has its uh, market cycle completed, its blow off top, and then it's, uh, you know, all these different human emotion phases right down here. But again, we've seen a new market cycle occur. So let's take it a quick look at uh, where we could head up to from here, because I think, as I said, rising tides raise all ships we will see higher prices for 2018. So now might be a good opportunity to get some of uh, some of, get you some Sia coin. 
Ah, it is uh, really nearly midnight, uh, and I need my sleep. So we've uh, come down from uh, the high here of 8.37, roughly, and all the way back down to the low of 44. Excuse me. And uh, we broke out again, and we started a new market cycle around about... Uh, the start of December. This is kind of when they started similarly happening. You can see here sort of middle of December for red coin, burst coin right here, middle of December. Look at that. Isn't that so interesting? Kind of happened all around the same time and right here as well in Bitcoin. Again, around the middle of September. That is so interesting. All of these four coins started breaking out around about the same time again. But with Sia coin, we came up uh, from that low of 44, high of 268. So then we then drew in this trend line right here, connecting the old high and this new high, new high in the new market cycle, that is. And since then, a nice rise up to close to the 50% Fibonacci mark of 441, but we didn't hit that quite. We've got there at 418. And now, like I mentioned before, a lot of these coins in the last 24 hours to 48 hours are in a sea of red at the moment. So a lot of them are retracing and just see a coin happens to be one of them. So I don't think this is out of the ordinary. It's not like it's going, in my opinion, not, gonna, not like it's going to head back all the way down again. As I said before, I think it's going to, in my opinion, join the cryptocurrency herd in 2018 and see new all-time highs in its price, just like almost all cryptocurrencies will this year, except for the really scammy coins. But you guys are smart enough to pick up on what those ones are. <coughs> BitConnect, <laughs> USI Tech, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, I had a frog in my throat. Uh, so uh, maybe we can, could come back to possibly... Uh, we may need to visit it, uh, this downtrend line, or at least maybe this old high right here, which is now an old high. So you could come back down a little further and retrace to about 266. But I guess the question is, if you're looking at getting into Sia coin for the first time after watching this video, and if you are confident enough, like I am, that we will be breaking all-time highs and seeing new highs coming in 2018 do you wait for you know the perfect opportunity to get it here or do you just get in get a core position for the first time well i think you know my, what my answer would be on that one but i'll leave that up to you to make up your own mind uh, let's see where we need to break through or key levels of resistance so a key level looks like right here if we're just looking we're just eyeballing it looks like this level right here here seems to be a level of resistance that looks like to be, you can see right here, a uh, level of support, another level of support right there. Could be a level of resistance around about your 485 mark. I guess you could call it psychological value of 500. And moving up from here, you've maybe got uh, this 78.6 level of 667. And breaking up from there, of course, your all-time high. So it doesn't mean we're going to go straight up to the all-time high. We may, you know, come up to the 78.6 and then back down again, visit a previous Fibonacci level. That tends to uh, happen more often times than not. But breaking through the all-time high, which I absolutely think, again, I can't stress this enough, and I know I repeat myself and I apologize, but this is my opinion, of course, and it's not financial advice, but breaking these all-time high, which I think we will do this year for sure. Where can we head up to from here? Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of places. So we've got a few trend lines here. One of the trend lines here is from the old high, and this is back in, where are we? Gee, this is back in June of 2016, where we posted a high here of about, about 186. So it's through this high here and this high here. You can see that trend line right there. So that could be a level of resistance right here, hitting that line. I think that would definitely be wherever it hits. Doesn't mean it's going to hit it here. Doesn't mean it could hit it up here. But wherever it hits, I think that will become a level uh, of resistance or you know a bit of a resistance point. We'll have to sort of knock on that door a couple of times before we break through it because we've got a, a significant high here and a significant eye high here. So that trend line definitely seems to be in play in my opinion. 
Uh, I'm going to get rid of that one. I think I don't like that. And so breaking up from here, uh, you've got the 1.618 level of 1,328. You've got the 2.72 here at 1,847 Satoshi. Again, this is priced against Bitcoin. It's the Polonix exchange. And you've got the 2.618 at 2,121. And you've got the 4.236 at 3,400 Satoshi. Could it go much higher than that? Yes, it could. But I just like to mention those key ones, the 1.618, 2.72, 2.618, and 4.236. They're kind of the main ones for now. And then we'll adjust the Fibonacci uh, high point and low point once we start making new highs. I think we'll have to readjust at some point. So those are the main levels, which I think will uh, hit before we see uh, a you know significant retracement. As I said before, I think this trend line right here Wherever that hits, it depends where it hits, but I think you will see a level of resistance at some point right there. But again, in the medium term, you would need to get through again this $500, uh, 500 uh, Satoshi barrier right here roughly, and maybe this 78.6 level. Of course, we're going to knock on the door of the uh, old, old all-time high of 837. What tends to happen is... Um, the all-time high doesn't become a massive level of resistance. It tends to kind of knock on the door a little bit and then eventually tends to quickly break through it. Now, I could be wrong on that, but it, that's what tends to happen in a bull market. And I do think that Sia coin, Red coin, Burst coin, and Bytecoin are now back, baby. They are back in full force, in my opinion, not financial advice. They are in the beginnings of new bull markets. As I've said at the start of this video, I will end it with the same thing. I think they are all going to break through their all-time highs this year in 2018 as all cryptos rise. I think they will follow. They will join the herd. Uh, rising tides raise all sh raises all ships. And I think they will see all-time highs moving higher from here. Where that is, I don't know exactly, but I've given some... Uh, some kind of indication of targets possibly uh, for all four coins. I think that's it, gang. I did that all in one take. Uh, thank you for being patient with my sniffles and, and all that stuff. I like to kind of do it in one take rather than sort of chopping and changing and editing and all that jazz. So I will do another video in the next 24 to 48 hours of four more cryptocurrencies. I'm probably looking at maybe to give you a uh, coming soon uh, I'm probably definitely going to look at Substratum. I've had a couple of people uh, who want me to look at Substratum, so I'll probably do that. I might look at Neo. Uh, there's a couple of others there. If you have any requests for the next video, uh, if you really want to see a particular coin analyzed, uh, let me know in the comment section of the video you are watching right now. And of course, if you want to stay, uh, stay informed about what's going on in the cryptocurrencies, uh, hit the big red subscribe button right there and join my family. All right. That is it, gang. It's, uh, it's over midnight and I'm going to go to bed. Stay safe. Stay informed. Speak soon.